जी आई एम डॉक्टर साधिया साकिब एंड दिस इज़ माय सेकंड लेक्चर अबाउट द जनरल इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ एनेटमी दिस इज़ द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द स्किन स्किन इज आल्सो कॉल्ड क्यूटस और द होल सिस्टम ऑफ इट इज़ कॉल्ड इंटेग्यूमेंट्री सिस्टम स्किन लाइंस द होल एक्सटर्नल सरफेस ऑफ द बॉडी दैट्स वाई इट इज़ कॉल्ड द लार्जेस्ट ऑर्गन ऑफ द बॉडी there are some structures which we call the appendages of the skin these are hairs nails sweat in the sebaceous glands these are the skin appendages skin mainly consists of two types of the tissues the superficial one which is which is darker is called the epidermis and the lower down underneath the epidermis there is connective tissue which is called dermis okay what are the different functions of the skin skin and the main function is protection from the mechanical osmotic and thermal damage and effective barrier for the microbial invasion because it covers the whole external surface of the body that's why it protects the skin from outer environment from outer different um, osmotic thermal damage and the microbial invasion there is a role of absorption role of absorption of the drugs and skin also performs the uh, function of excretion like the sweats it is defensive and resists entry of antigens by primary immune response it uh, it has a role in immune response of the body it is also an endocrine organ because it synthesizes vitamin d because it synthesizes hormone vitamin d that's why it is the endocrine organ it regulates the body temperature it is also a sense organ we can sense it it receives it perceives that can perceive the sense of temperature uh, pressure and pain it is also elastic and can stretch and can be compressed so these are the functions these are the main functions of the skin <clears throat> there are different types of the skin there is thick skin and the thin skin thick skin is mostly hairless skin and it is also called glabrous skin it covers the palms soles and the flexor surfaces of digits our palms soles and the flexor surface of the digits there uh, here the skin is very thick it is uh, actually categorized as thick skin it possesses complex pattern of friction papillary ridges there are some specific pattern of the ridges are present which we call it friction ridges or papillary ridges this is the characteristic of thick skin okay next is the thin skin thin skin is also called hairy skin it covers the major fraction of the body this is a histological diagram uh in which we are showing you the comparison of thick and thin skin okay you are not concerned with their with the, the detailed histology or what are the specific layers in thick and thin skin but this is just to show you that uh, the superficial most layer in case of thick skin is very thick is very dense and thick this layer is called stratum corneum and in case of thin skin this superficial layer which is stratum corneum is less speci- less conspicuous or less visible so this is the main difference but uh, you will see it in detailed structure of the different layers of the skin in histology what are the skin lines there are two types of the skin lines one the lines which are externally visible and the second lines which are detectable after manipulation or incision these are specific lines which we call lines of langer and crasel the externally visible lines are the main category there are we categorize externally visible lines the first is the surface pattern lines we can also call them tension lines or skin creases skin creases is a commonly used term so we can say them that these are the skin creases 
These are produced due to deep primary creases that are ir irregularly divided by fine secondary creases into triangular areas. These are further divided into tertiary and then quaternary lines. This is the diagrammatic representation. These are the skin creases, skin lines, tension lines. They are divided by primary, then secondary, then tertiary uh, lines into triangular areas. These lines, they are present in different parts of the body and they are called actually the skin creases. Okay, <clears throat> the first category in externally visible skin lines are the skin creases, skin pattern lines or tension lines. So this is the diagrammatic representation of these. Okay, on a hand there are some uh, prominent lines. These are the, in addition to these prom prom prominent lines, such lines are also present which are present on the whole surface of the palm. Then second category is the wrinkle lines. Wrinkle lines are further categorized as lines of expression seen on the face linked to age related progressive loss of elasticity. <coughs> <coughs> these are lines of expressions and these are present mainly on the face. And their, uh, and their uh, reason is because of the loss of elasticity, because of loss of elastic fibers on the skin, of the skin, these lines become prominent. There are also lines of occupation occur due to the repeated muscular contraction. Mm, there are different, uh, uh, because of the different type of occupation, for example, uh, a laborer, whose work is to lift the weight, there are certain muscles which contract mostly and the, uh, at those areas, uh, the skin over these muscular uh, contracted areas, their elasticity, their elastic fibers, they orientate themselves. So these lines become prominent. There are also lines of contour present at the junction of the body planes as cheeks with nose. There is a prominent fold of an, on our face which we call the nasolabial fold. This becomes prominent in certain people. There are lines of dependency due to effect of gravity on loose skin or fatty tissue as beneath the chin of the aged. Okay, these are the, this is the diagrammatic representation of the wrinkle lines. There are many lines which are prominent on this face. There are forehead lines. <coughs> There are frowning lines, there are crow's feet, <coughs> there is nasolabial fold which is also present between the cheeks and the nose and mouth. There is a fold which is very prominent called the nasolabial fold. <coughs> there are mental creases, mental creases, there are chin lines, these all are wrinkle lines which are because of uh, because of the uh, because of the elastic fibers which are present in the skin they orientate themselves and certain lines become prominent okay the next is the flexure lines or the joint lines they occur in the vicinity of the synovial joints flexure lines on the flexor surfaces of the palms and soles and digits and the two transverse creases on the palmar surface of the hand okay this is the diagram of the palm of the hand. Take it the prominent, the most prominent creases in which the palmers are very interested. These most prominent creases, they are actually the flexure lines. And these are because of the present of presence of underlying joints in the hand. These are also prominent on the on the palmar surface of digits and this is also because of the joints present underneath these lines okay these are called the joint lines or the flexure lines because they are prominent yet they are formed because of the joints synovial joints movable joints present underneath these lines there are papillary or the friction ridges 
present on the palms, soles and the flexor surfaces of the digits due to the internal dermal papillae. Okay, they are present due to the internal dermal papillae. They are genetically determined. What are dermal papillaries? <coughs> we have seen this diagram. Here, the dermis is the underlying pink area and the top or the superficial darker area is dermis. There are some finger-like projections which are going from the dermis into the epidermis. And these prominent projections are called the dermal papillae. This, these dermal papillae uh, are specific in a certain individual. And because of these dermal papillae, the prominent ridges which are produced on the epidermis, they are called the papillary ridges. And this pattern is very specific in an individual. So, we can call it that it is an individual specific, it is genetically determined. There are specific patterns of it. There are these ridge, ridge patterns are of three types. They can be arches, they can be loops, they can be whorls. The arches are in 5% of the individuals. The loops are most common. They are in 75% and the whorls. This is the type of the pattern which these papillary ridges have okay this is the number one a diagram is actually the pattern is arch like it is present only in five percent of the individuals the b is loops these are actually the pattern is just like loops this is most common and present in the 75 percent of the individuals and this is whorls and it is present in 25 percent of the people okay <coughs> Dermatoglyphics, it is the study of analysis of these uh, ridge pattern, okay? because this is genetically determined, this is very person specific, we have identity of uh, ourselves through this, through these papillary ridges, so there is a branch of science which deals with the study of this, these ridge patterns, we call it dermatoglyphics. Okay, next is the intrinsic star scarring or stretch marks. These are also lines which are present because of the scarring or the stretch marks due to some stretch conditions that damage the collagen and elastic fibers. Okay, there are some conditions when the when the underlying when the overlying skin is stretched because of some underlying mass or some um, some uh, mass is present underlying area. This leads to the poorly vascularized, partially reversible scar tissue. Okay, it is seen physiologically in case of pregnancy, in case of weight lifters, but it is also present pathologically in obesity, in tumors. Okay, in, in this case, the overlying skin is overstretched. That's why the, this area becomes poorly vascularized and it is healed because of the um, scar tissue in that area. Initially, these scar tissues are red lines. We call them striarubri. And later on, this, these are replaced by the white line stria LB or stria gravidarum. Okay, these are, this is because of the stretching, overstretching of the skin. Okay, this is the diagrammatic representation. These are stretch marks. These are the white lines present. The overlying skin is damaged because of the overstretch. And again, this is also. Next is the pigmentation line. Seen in highly pigmented races due to the marked difference of pigmentation between darker extensor and the palmar flexor surfaces of the arm. They get the scan happen with us when we are exposed with the with the sunlight then there uh, the uh, our dorsal surfaces our dorsal dorsum of the hand becomes very dark so there is a marked difference between the dorsum and the palmar surface of the hand so we can appreciate or we can see a prominent uh, line of demarcation between the dorsum and the ventral surface and it can also be uh, pathologically this is the pigmentation line uh, this is actually a condition which is called vitiligo so there is a marked demarcation between the darkly pigmented area and the less pigmented area 
so it is pathological but in normal case and physiologically it can happen with us or with the normal darker people okay next are the langer and the crazel lines seen after manipulation or incision these lines are not externally visible as we have seen many other examples but these lines are uh present uh, yeah we can see them after manipulation or incision by using some probe by using some magnifying glass we can appreciate the different lines which are present on the surface of the skin these are lines that suggest the surgical incision to reduce the post operative scarring okay these lines are actually suggested by langer and grazel first langer observed these lines Langer observed these lines on cadavers on dead individuals and he observed that these lines are present in the in the uh, parallel to the lines of the muscle fibers which are present under the skin these lines are mapped out on cadavers by the langer but the crazel observed these lines in live individuals and he observed that these lines are present perpendicular to the muscle fiber direction he also mapped out uh, the, uh, the different uh, lines on the whole body and these lines are actually uh, were observed just to have a good scar formation good scar healing on the surface of the skin so they have their clinical importance grazel because he observed these lines in healthy and live individuals so we always make an incision according to these lines because in uh, in these lines the scar tissue is very clear and clean and, and there is less visible scar later on okay grazel approximated these lines to wrinkle lines uh, those lines which were observed by the grazel he actually observed them uh, in the line of wrinkle lines okay these are the relaxed tension lines also called and like these are preferred over the langer lines we prefer the langer line uh, crazel lines over the langer lines because they were observed on live individuals this is the diagrammatic representation of the langer lines and the crazel lines <coughs> so in this pattern they observed or they mapped out the whole body okay what is next next is the connective tissue classification <clears throat> connective tissue is actually the tissue which is present under the skin uh, its first category is it can be soft and jelly like matrix in soft and jelly like matrix we further classified it accordingly first is the ordinary connective tissue and ordinary connective tissue is further classified as regular and regular okay we have the classification of connective tissue the first category of the connective tissue classification is the soft and jelly like matrix okay in connective tissue we have cells fibers and the intercellular substance intercellular substance or intercellular matrix take okay, we have th three things the cells of the connective tissue the fibers of the connective tissue and the intercellular substance so there are different categories of the connective tissue by the concentration by the concentration or the number of cells present in that connective tissue the numbers and the concentration numbers or the types of the fibers in that connective tissue and there is the intercellular matrix which is present okay these three things um, by the by different composition of these three things we can classify the connective tissue differently okay the first is the first category is it is soft and jelly like matrix <clears throat> in soft and jelly like matrix we have ordinary connective tissue in ordinary connective tissue we have irregular and regular 
irregular connective tissue in which the cells and the uh, fibers are not arranged regularly. They are in a haphazard pattern. Its first category is loose connective tissue. In loose connective tissue, matrix is more than cells. That is, the connective tissue of the eyelids on our whole face, the connective tissue of the eyelids is different. It is loose. It is This area is very loose and delicate. We call it that loose connective tissue is present in the eyelids. Okay, There is dense connective tissue. Cells and the fibers are more than matrix. It is dense because the number of cells and the number of the fibers are more as compared to the intercellular matrix. So its example is capsule. Every organ is uh, wrapped by a specific, by a thin membrane or a sheet of uh, connective tissue, which we call it capsule. Take it. We, you, later on, uh, we'll see that every organ is uh, have, a, have its own capsule. <clears throat> Adipose connective tissue, it is rich in the adipocytes. The cells which are present in adipose connective tissue, they are specifically named as adipocytes or fat cells. That's why its category is different. It is adipose connective tissue or fat. Okay, next is the regular connective tissue. There is a difference. The cells and the fibers and the regular connective tissue, they are organized in a, in a specific pattern that's why they are called the regular connective tissue example is sheets and the bundles of the cells bundles okay the sheets are fascias and epineurosis you will see and you will do your regions in detail there are many fascias and epineurosis in abdomen area the epineurosis the flat abdominal muscles are uh, musculoeponeurotic Partly they are muscular and partly they are aponeurotic. And there are also fascia, superficial fascia and deep fascia of the skin. Okay, next is the bundles, ligaments and the tendons. You are familiar with the ligaments which are involved in the different joint formations and also the tendons when they insert, when the muscles insert into the bones, then they form tendons. These are the regular connective tissue they form bundles <coughs> okay next is the soft jelly like matrix again category is the same but uh, now the connective tissue is composite type okay what is composite type of the connective tissue in which matrix is fluid normally the intercellular matrix is not fluid the the connective tissue in which the matrix is fluid like for example blood and the lymph in which the cells are present red blood cells white blood cells platelets they are present but the intercellular matrix is fluid like it is called the composite type of the connective tissue then there is embryonic or the mucoid connective tissue in which the mesenchymal cells are present mesenchyme it is also called mesenchyme it is present in the umbilical cord. In embryonic life, the whole connective tissue in an embryo is mesenchymal type. But later on, it is replaced with a specific type of the connective tissue. Actually, in mesenchymal connective tissue, they are, the cells are of pluripotent type of cells. These cells are those which, are, uh, which can be transformed into any other type of a cell. But later on, when the, when, when the embryo develops and their specific tissues are formed, then this mesenchymal uh, type of the connective tissue or embryonic type of the connective tissue becomes less. Okay, next is the pigmented. Connective tissue is loaded with the pigment. For example, choroid of the eye, many connective tissues in eye are of pigmented type because the function of the eye is to absorb the light and uh, to form the image and this is um, because of the pigment present in the different layers of the eye okay next is the synovial structures or synovial sheet connective tissue with synovial features as bursi and synovial sheet okay these are the different types of the tissues which are present in or around a synovial joint. 
So we the different types of the tissues we can say that the synovial membrane is a type of synovial structure. Bursa present. Bursa is actually a pouch of the synovial membrane. It is present outside the joint cavity and it is actually a fold or a pouch or a bag of the synovial membrane containing the synovial fluid which is just to protect the different structures of the joint and these bursas are very much present in the knee joint and in the shoulder joint you will see in detail when you will do these joints okay next is the other type of the connective tissue which is solid first we do the soft jelly like now we have solid special skeletal tissue okay this solid special skeletal tissue we categorize it as two that is one is the chondrous cartilaginous or non mineralized type of the connective tissue chondrous is a word used for cartilaginous structure okay this is the type of the connective tissue consisting of chondrocytes here the cells are specific we can name them as specific chondrocytes and they are embedded in the matrix that lacks minerals so we categorize this type of the connective tissue as chondrous or cartilage that's because the cells are chondrocytes the cells have specific structure so we name it as chondrocytes and they are embedded in the matrix that lacks minerals then there is osseous or the bony mineralized connective tissue this is the type of the connective tissue consisting of osteocytes embedded in the firm matrix rich in minerals okay now the cell type is osteocytes that's why we call this tissue as osseous or bony and the intercellular matrix is mineralized it is full of minerals this is the difference between a cartilage and the bone cartilage is not mineralized without minerals and in case of bone it is mineralized okay these are the diagrams showing embryonic connective tissue this is the mesenchymal type of connective tissue the cells present in it are pl pluripotent cells and they can be differentiated into any type of the tissue this is present in embryo but in adult human it is not present loose connective tissue in which the cells and the fibers are less as compared to the intercellular matrix that's why it is loose it is called loose connective tissue dense connective tissue dense irregular connective tissue in which the cells and the fibers are more but they are not arranged in a pattern they are in a haphazard direction that's why we call it dense irregular connective tissue <clears throat> this is the example of dense regular connective tissue in which we have abdominal muscles these flat abdominal muscles they are musculo tendinous mu uh, sorry musculo epineurotic their lateral part is muscular and the whitish central part is aponeurotic they form aponeurotic sheath which is example of the dense regular connective tissue then there are example of ligaments and the tendons this is also example of the dense regular connective tissue next is the adipose connective tissue and with the cell type present in the connective tissue is adipocytes or the fat cells these are the adipose connective tissue okay next is the cartilage and the bone there are different structures which are present around the uh, synovial joints they are the synovial structures and the articular surface or the joint surface of the bone is covered with the articular cartilage which is another type of the connective tissue and the bone is also another type of the connective tissue okay thank you